had some car racing or we had some tape measure measuring that we did today. But let's do something that's a little bit more interesting. How does this system work? Because it works on a friction system. So what I've done is taken these and I've taken them apart. So this guy right over here is the guts of one of these racers. And here it is. So the wheels are actually on the back side. There you go. And I've taken out, and these are the guts to it. Now, what I want you to notice is I want you to notice that these gears here are all different piles of gears, and they make this thing right here, which is a flywheel turn. Now, let's put a nice dark line on this flywheel. And let's put a nice line right over here on these two gears. Okay? Everything has some nice lines on it. And as I turn this line right here, take a look at it. It doesn't turn very far, but look how fast that green flywheel goes around. I move a total of one tooth. And that, that flywheel goes around almost a full time. And in fact, you'll notice these green lines here started equal. Well, I get the first green line back around, and I'm only halfway around on this. So if I actually try to move this right along at a reasonable pace, you can't even see the green on the flywheel because it's moving so fast. That means that the angular velocity of these different gears is very, very different. And let's take a look at how that works. I want you to do the following activity. What I've done is I've taken the various pieces and the various gears, and I've drawn a schematic for them. And so it is easy enough to see how these gears go together. There we go. And then this is the wheel. So as this wheel turns, it turns this big gear here. That big gear here goes together with this little gear right up here. Now that little gear is attached to a big gear. Now I, for your use, have drawn them with a solid axle. So whatever this goes around, this goes around. It's one gear, okay, as it goes around. But because of the different radii from here to here, you're going to get a change in linear velocity. So we're going to talk about that. And then this big portion of the gear hooks up with this little portion of gear right here. And so it hooks up here, and it moves around. But again, this little gear is attached to this big gear. So this little and that big all go together. And this little gear attaches right in here. And as that gear goes around, this little one makes this very large platter turn, and that is the flywheel. What makes this whole process go is the fact that once this flywheel is in motion, it has momentum, and that momentum is what actually keeps the car moving forward. Now, the problem is when we did it, the clutch systems kept failing, but that's okay. We don't necessarily need that. But as you can see, if we attempt to line all these pieces up, what we get is we get gear reduction, and that's very important. This is used in all sorts of items. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the angular velocity of the wheel, and you're going to have to transmit all that angular and linear velocity through all of these pieces to find the angular and linear velocity of the flywheel. We don't even care about this over here because the left half runs exactly the same as the right half. So given that information, here's your homework. You're to find the linear velocity of gear A that is attached right here. Right here. Okay. 
And that linear velocity you're going to find using omega and the fact that this gear has a 10 centimeter radius. Remember, to do linear velocity, you have to have omega and the radius r. So use those two items right here. Then you're going to take the, ang the angular velocity or the linear velocity of this big gear here, and it's going to be the exact same as the linear velocity of this little gear here because whatever the outside of this gear turns, the outside of this gear right here turns. So the linear velocities are going to be equal. But the angular velocity, although equal between these two gears, angular velocity here equals angular velocity here, the linear velocity of the big gear is going to be much bigger because gear B has a different radius than gear C, and then so on and so forth. So make sure that you understand what we're up to here. And yes, it is going to be a multi-step problem, and yes, the numbers are going to get ugly. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolutely real-life example of when angular and linear velocity are used. So to make this go in a straight line, you have lots of linear and angular velocities going in to this process right here. So with that, your job is to do this page. Okay, that is going to be due Monday after Thanksgiving. Thanks, folks.